Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Today we're going to be doing some more themed ephemera, this time using Oceanic Adventure kit from uh, Happiness in Crafting. We're going to be making a hidden journaling spot, a pocket with a tuck, and then a hidden bookmark, a hidden bookmark, a hidden paper clip, excuse me. So um, you will have seen videos on the hidden journaling spot and the hidden paper clip on my channel. If you want to check that out, please feel free. I've got um, some tools out. I've got a cutter um, that we're going to be needing to use on the paper clip. And I've got my art glitter glue as well as my fabric tack. I've got some bits and pieces of lace and buttons and things like that to just kind of um, make this fun. So we're going to start with the um, hidden paper clip. So let me go ahead and get this over it. And I will um, be fast forwarding through the inking process. I didn't get all the inking done. I just got all of my pieces gathered. So I've got a little bit of cheesecloth, a piece of lace, some scraps of paper to do a little bit of collaging, a little sentiment. Um, the sentiment comes from I believe it's uh, P Pink Monarch prints, but again, I'll be sure that I get that linked in the description box. And then just again, uh, scraps. So I've got a paper clip here. So to make the hidden paper clip, we're gonna go ahead and first um, start with inking the edges because I do like that look. When you make these, you can make them whatever length that you want. We're going to be folding each of these pieces in half, so you want to keep that in mind. It's also helpful if you don't choose directional paper. The very first one I made, I used directional paper, which I was able to get around because I just decided I would just use the paper clip on the bottom of the page rather than the top. So you just want to keep that in mind when doing this. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to, this is the, this is the base piece. So we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to put this one on top of it, fold it in half. We're going to cut a slit in it to slide the paper clip through. The paper clip is going to be attached to this piece. But again, you'll see that as we move through. So I'm going to go ahead and ink everything up and I'll, again, I'll be sure to fast forward through this part so you don't have to watch all of that. I, the inking is done on that. So I'm going to go ahead and set the ink aside. And so the first thing again that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold this in half and just try to line it up as best you can. I did end up having to trim some of mine just because it can be tricky um, to get them lined up. I can already see that I'm going to have to do that. Go ahead and use a bone folder to um, crease that really well. I'm going to shut my shade. I forgot to do that. Just a second, guys. I don't like it to be dark in here, but... So I leave it open as long as, as much as I possibly can. I guess it looks okay. There's a little bit of a trim that's needed on the bottom here, um, but that's all right. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same with this one. We're going to go ahead and fold it in half. And this is what's really helpful about not using a directional paper is you don't have to think so hard about, you know, where everything's going to land and how it's going to, how it's going to lay out. So. Um, that's a little crooked. Hang on. Let's see if I can straighten that. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and attach our paper clip here on the top of the base piece. And you want the longer part of the paper clip to go on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the back. And you do want to leave a little bit of this up. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my, I'm going to grab some sorry silk in this kind of green, sea green color and use it for my tie on the top. Sorry, I didn't have that already prepared. I had everything else. <laughs> so here's the sorry silk. I'm just going to take off a bunch of the really bad scraggly things. I saved this stuff. In fact, I might use it on this project because that's pretty, makes some really great texture for underneath things. So I always forget to do that. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit, like so, and then something's thumping outside of my window. I wonder if my husband's out there doing something. He must be. <laughs> um, so here we go. We're going to just loop that through. I loop it through the paper clip and then put both of the ends through that hole and then just give it a nice little tug. Oh, actually, I can't do that yet. Sorry. 
Boop, 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 boop. Goodness gracious, Rennie. That's not right. We have to get our top piece on first. Here, I thought I was going to be all slick and ahead of the game. I am going to switch that. Um, the air conditioner is already driving me crazy. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So we do want the paper clip on first, though. So we're going to go ahead and just slide that on. Forgive me. And then on this piece, we're just going to kind of find the middle of the center. And it doesn't have to be precise. I'm actually making them with kind of a bigger slot than I probably need because then I've got some wiggle room to, um, to get that paper clip or to get this piece lined up straight on the, um, on the top piece or on the base, excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and cut a little slit here. There we go, like so. I'm going to put this on the paper clip here paper clip is way off. Scooch that over. Like so. And I didn't realize that was going to be so long. I don't mind it though. And you know actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, round my corners here on this. <clears throat> actually that means I need to take it off. There we go. We're just going to round the corners on this piece front and back. You don't have to do that, obviously. Um, some people like the rounded corners. I do sometimes, but not always. So do what you love. Don't, don't have to follow me exactly or anyone else. It's really about what you like. So we're going to go ahead and put that back on. There we go. And we're just going to make sure it's nice and lined up before we start gluing, because now what we're going to do is we're going to attach. I need to pull that up a little bit and it looks like it needs to scooch over just a tad to be even like so and um, I'm wondering if I want to round the bottom too. Nope, I kind of like the square and the round together. So now we're going to put our sorry silk ribbon through here again. Got a little ahead of myself before. Just threading that through the top of the paper clip and then um, put both ends through the hole. Give it a good tug. And then what she did, because it depends on the, the ribbon that you use, um, this sari silk is pretty thick, so I'm not going to be able to really shove that paper clip back down uh, into, that, um, into that hidden space. So I'm going to trim this just a little bit. And there we're, we're, we're good to go here. So. Now what we're going to do, because we need to now secure all this and we want to glue this down, so we're going to use Art Glitter Glue and we're going to go ahead and, um, and glue the top flap to the base. Um, I like to do it on this part because then I don't have to think about what this edge is down here and around, so it's just a little bit easier to do that way. I like to use the towel because it doesn't, then my fingers don't get all sticky. So there we go. And so what's going to happen here is you're going to have um, you're going to have a surface on this side that's going to go on one side of the page, and then the other side will go on the other side. So I'm going to decorate one kind of with that oceanic paper theme. And um, I actually didn't even look through my ephemera for that kit. Um, maybe I'll do that next time. I just grab bits and bobs uh, from my stash, um, you know, like I showed you before, the little bit of cheesecloth and lace and stuff that kind of looks a little bit like a net, I think, anyway. So we're just going to stay with that just to keep things simple. So um, before we decorate, I'm going to show you how this is going to work. So <clears throat> pretty nifty. You're just going to open it up here. Slide it onto your page, push it down as far as it will go, and then you've got kind of you've got it acts as you know as a bookmark for your page, and then so when you turn it over, you've got the other side. I think it's pretty darn sweet and so easy. I have tried so many hidden paper clips, and this is by far the easiest. So we're going to do a little bit of decorating. I'm going to decorate this side. And i um, just going to create a little bit of a cluster here just to create some interest. So um, I 
I think that's just a little bit too big. So let me just, whoops, I was using my hair ruler for that. Let me, let me grab that and try again. I'm a little off camera there, guys. You never kind of know whether or not the pieces are going to be the right size for what you're doing until you get going. So that's okay. It's okay to improvise. I do want a little bit of a dark piece on the um, underneath that just to kind of make it pop off the surface here. So let's see. One more tear here. There we go. Sometimes I like a really rugged tear and other times I like the tear ruler kind of look. So we're going to go ahead and put this down here. I feel like it's still a little bit long. Just going to use my fingers and tear that. So we're going to do that and then kind of make a cluster here. And what else did we have? We had some lace and I'm going to put a bigger piece of the cheesecloth here. Let me just grab another bit my basket over here. This is my basket of um, just smaller bits of lace and fabric and such. Oh, this is actually would be, actually be quite pretty too. Maybe I should use some of this. It really unravels though because it's so fragile, but I think I'm gonna like this because it kind of has that look too like uh, lace or like lace, like a net. So yeah, let's do that. So I forgot to turn my fabric tack over so we're going to let that kind of go to the end before we start and I can do a layer of this as well um, on top of or in between some of the other pieces so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this kind of down here in this area and it's kind of like so I like that it's got a little bit of shiny stuff in it too I'm going to trim these edges just a little bit they're really, really wonky and long. Forgive me while I, while I grab my towel here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our layering. So let's go ahead and put this piece here. I'm just going to use the fabric tack because I am still attaching to a more textural um, substance here with this kind of um, netting looking material. It's actually from an old scarf from my stash not from my stash, from my bedroom. Uh, I am way too hot to wear um, scarves, so I thought, you know, I have so many, I may as well just kind of repurpose them. So I am using them in mixed media, some of them. So there we go, a little bit of a cluster there. So now let's go ahead, I think we won't use the lace, we'll just use this, this fabric, so. But I am gonna put this cheesecloth down. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of glue stick just because it's easier than the wet glue initially to get it to kind of be where I want it to be, like so. Yeah, because it's really, um, it really comes apart really easily. It's kind of a strange um, cheesecloth. <clears throat> so we're going to, and then we're going to put this little word remember. It's a little tag, flea market tags, again from uh, Pink Monarch prints, I believe. go ahead and put that right there in the center and some other little scragglies here I'm gonna just trim really quick perfect so then we also have a button where's the button Did I have a button for the huh yeah this is the button for this so we're gonna go ahead and put the button on as well I love that little bit of pop with a button being kind of a more three-dimensional object here. So we're just gonna plop that right there. And like so. And um, this is a lot plainer than I would normally do it, but the cool thing is, is a person could write here if they wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that as it is. And again, this can be decorated on the other side with a different, with different ephemera for whatever that that page on the other side is going to be. So there's just a close up of that. And again, as I mentioned in another video, what this is doing for me by doing themed ephemera is I'm getting into my stuff and really exploring what I've collected because I have a lot 
That's just what I tend to do. And it, it's uh, enabling me to use these things um, because I'm, I've got my hands on them <laughs> um, and starting to use them. So I haven't done a lot of actual journal making yet. That is coming. So the second one we're gonna do is the, um, is a pocket. So again, same similar, similar ephemera that we've got here um, that we're gonna just go ahead and apply to this. Not gonna do a lot to this actual piece, but I am gonna get my hole punch and create a thumb, a thumb hole on this so that we've got something up here to kind of grab onto. So let's go ahead and do that first and then we'll do some inking. So, so let me go ahead and ink and I'll speed through that and be back with you. Okay, those are all inked up. And just while I'm thinking about it, th this paper is printed on 60 pound copy paper. Um, since I printed it, I have moved down to a 40 pound paper because it's um, just kind of a good happy medium between the 20 pound and the 60 pound. So. That's what I'm using currently. So I've got all that inked up. I do need to punch some holes in these tags here really quick. Um, let me see if I can find my punch easily. Forgot about that as well. I don't want it to be, I've got this one. This is gonna have to do, it's gonna be kind of big um, because I can't do the super small one because then it would be way too small. So we're gonna go ahead and just punch a hole here. That's okay. And then in this one, because these are going to slide in that little pocket. That's not the pocket, the top pocket, but the um, sorry, the pocket um, that's going to go sideways, which will make sense in a second. And then I just realized now that this is going to go here, and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to cut that. I didn't think about that, but I did want this pocket here just because I thought it was really kind of a cool idea to do. I don't want to cover up the goofy fish, so I thought this would be a great um, a great way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some um, glue on this and go ahead and glue it on the side. And we'll just do that thumb notch again here in a second. Oh, that's not what I want. Silly girl. Ah, oh, my goodness gracious. I don't want to glue the whole thing down. You know what I'm going to do to resolve that because now that's going to be a problem. I'm going to grab a piece of um, copy dye paper. Everything is fixable, right? Say it with me. Everything is fixable. <laughs> It'll stabilize the pocket anyway, so I should have done that before I just wiped all that glue off. But There's usually always a workaround for when you kind of mess up um, but the pockets can always use some extra stability so this isn't a bad thing at all so let's go ahead and get that on my coffee dyed paper there we go cut that out really quick we all make mistakes don't we it's the cool part of creating being artistic and feel it being okay with Things not going the way that we that we planned, and we do goofy things. So I'm going to ink that up again because I don't want any of any white edges to show if I have any. So there we go. That was pretty silly. Okay, <laughs> we only want to glue <laughs> this side, this side, and this side. So. I'm gonna hold it here so I don't do that again. Oh goodness. There we go. go ahead and slide that over. I'm gonna just turn this so I can get this nice and straight. It is cut just slightly smaller just because I wanted to be able to see those kind of crooked edges and stuff like that there. So there we got that. And then um, let's go ahead and wipe off that bit of glue so that I can hole punch that again. Hopefully I can get it in the same spot. Cross your fingers. Should be okay though. Yeah. Oh, that was 
weird. Just trim that off a little bit. I could have done the whole the thumb hole um, after I attached the pocket here or the tuck spot. But it's all fixable. So there we go. So now we've got a little tuck here. So when it's on the page, again, it's going to go on the page like this, wherever you want to attach it. And then you're going to have a tuck here because you'll just glue it on the three sides. And then you'll have tuck here. So I've got these little tags. I'm not going to do anything with them. I'm just going to slide them in there. But I do want to put some string on them here in a second. Just trying to figure out what string I can use that's going to be super thin. I may have to grab some ribbon here in a second. But we are going to do a little bit of a cluster on the on this piece, I believe. It's going to have to be kind of small though because I don't have a lot of room. It's a piece of sari silk. Tear this down just a little bit. Ink it up. Nice. That'll be perfect. I think I want it to go the other way. It's going to kind of arrange it a little bit here before we make a decision. This one needs to be cut down as well. Torn down rather. just like that really dark pop of something there and I think in this case I'm going to slide a piece of this in just to kind of break up the dark. Do what you want to do though guys. In this case I'm going to go ahead and tear off the edges here. I'm going to leave one straight edge and go ahead and ink this as well. It's kind of nice to have edges that are not all the same. I think it adds a lot of interest when you're doing kind of a clustery thing. So I think that is good. So let's go ahead and start our glue in. Some Fabri-Tac here. Attach the sari silk. There we go. And then what did we have here? I think we had this piece. I'm gonna, whoops, I'm going to use my fabric tack again. I just love the cluster, the cluster look. I love all the variety of it, as you probably heard me say before. Um, it's just really, I find it really interesting and fun and it's a great way to use your scraps so that's what all this is it's just my scraps actually I wanted that one in the middle sorry yeah, pause unstick oh my goodness <laughs> it's helpful if you remember what you were gonna do but it's okay it's all fixable go ahead and get that in there just kind of a little bit cattywampus not even and then we'll get this baby on. We should be good for it to still stick. About like so. And so if you see, you've got this just nice little cluster effect, which I just think adds a lot of interest. It leaves a, it gives a really three-dimensional um, feel to the piece. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, I didn't use any ribbon yet. So maybe we'll use a piece of the ribbon. This is a little bit big. I've got just a small little word but I think this will be pretty to put our put our word on maybe it might be too small now it is too small goodness gracious about like so yeah that'll work It'll be tricky to get it on lace though so I'm gonna I don't want it everywhere. I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, guys. Let me just scrunch that up just. 
just a little bit. A little bit of flexibility there. Go ahead and put our word on as well. Let's put beautiful right here. Love that. Very simple. I love these flea market tags. Oh my gosh, you guys need to check her, check out her shop. I think I'm going to put the button, um, maybe I'll put a little bit of this cheesecloth down, put a button on top of it. And again, I like to just use a little bit of, um, of a glue stick just to get it to stick there initially and then attach the button which will go down into that surface, that cheesecloth, and stick it really good. So there we go. There we go. Get that a press with my towel. And there you've got a pocket. So we're going to go ahead and stick. Oh, I was going to try to find some ribbon. Hold on, guys. Um, got to find the ribbon. Let me pause really quick, guys. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use the sari silk just because it's what I have here and it's just gonna be easier than trying to figure something else out at this point. So we're gonna just thread that through that hole. And again, both, both of the ends back through. Give it a gentle tug. You don't wanna to tug too hard because you could tear your hole. So I'm just gonna pull a bit like so. The sari silk does create a little bit of bulk that's sometimes a little bit much, especially when it's used inside the journal. But, And I am just going to leave this white. Um, oftentimes I'll back this with some coffee dyed paper, but in this case I'm just going to use it as is. Just going to stick that in there and then thread the second one through. This piece looks to be a little bit smaller. Thread that through again in similar fashion. So my fingers are sticky. <laughs> Makes grabbing things a little tricky. Gentle tug again. Don't don't pull too hard because you don't want to just tear your hole because that's happened to me before. Just gonna cut that a little bit. Stick the other tag in, and there we go. Got a cute little pocket. Super easy. A um, little bit of writing space, not a lot, but that's okay because there's always lots of places in the journal to have journaling spaces. So there is project number two, and here we're going to do the last one. And my most favorite, hopefully I'm going to remember all the steps because I haven't made a lot of these. So again, similar ephemera for decorating, kind of giving a little bit of a cluster look. And um, I'm going to go ahead and ink this up, and again, I'll speed through that and be back with you in a second. Okay, that is all inked up, so here the fun begins. So a little bit about the pieces. So what you want to do is choose um, what your paper, you're going to cut two pieces the same exact size. So I actually just used a piece of um, coffee dyed or tea, tie, tea dyed paper for the inside because this isn't going to show other than this bit at the top, which you're going to see here in a moment. So you want two pieces that are going to fit together like that. It looks like I'll probably have to trim a little bit off, but that's all right. And then this piece needs to be, your third piece needs to be smaller because it's the part that's going to slide in as the hidden journaling spot. I found that this is the best size because it gives me some wiggle room to get the pocket or to get the um, journaling spot inside of the pocket that we're going to be creating. I also found that it was better to keep it shorter rather than going all the way. I couldn't often get it all the way to get it to go all the way into the bottom. I'm not sure why. I mean, not just because of like glue, but it just it just wasn't working. So that's what I decided to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is. Um, you're going to take your top piece, which is the main, um, the main picture, and we're going to cut a little bit off of the top of it. So in this case, I don't want to cut too much because I don't want to cut her head off, um, but we're just going to kind of cut a cap off of here, just like so, and that it can be whatever size you want it to be. There are no rules about that. Um, whatever just suits you. Um, because what we're going to do, I'm actually not making it completely hidden. 
um, by inking this edge of, these edges again, it's going to show that there's a split in the paper there. Um, if you don't want that, don't ink these edges. If you don't, if you want it to be like truly secretive and nobody will ever know it's there unless you tell them, then don't ink them. I'm going to ink that one just a little bit more, a little more emphasis. Um, and so what we have now is we have a separation in this main image and we're going to make our hidden journaling spot with this piece. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and glue this piece on. And obviously we're not going to glue here. We're just going to glue the three sides. So I'm going to hold it here. That's a great way to remember what side you're not putting glue on. Run a string of a bead of glue along all this edge. Hopefully I can do it fairly straight. So, go ahead and glue that down. I, I like to turn my paper just because it helps me to be able to get this on really straight. So we're gonna, and again, don't worry if you have to trim something off in the end. It's quite all right, which I can see that I'm going to need to do. Um, you can always trim it up. So just give that a good press, like so. We're going to go ahead and just trim this while we have it up. As you can see, I've got a little bit of an edge there. I, I didn't really measure. Um, I'll tell you what the, the general measurements on this are because I was particular about my initial cuts so that I could let you know kind of the size of this, but it's not exact. That again. There we go. So this was, let me grab my little ruler here. I have a little metal ruler that I like to use. Ah, I can grab it. Goodness gracious. Okay. So it is, it looks like three and three quarters about inches wide. And, whoops, that's not right because I went from the wrong line. Uh, looks like four inches from here to here. I knew that didn't sound right. And then seven and a half this way ish, seven and a half ish. So that is that. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this aside and bring in the. Uh, and now, if you wanted to not have this attached to a page, you would also want to do something with the back. I'm not going to make that decision right now just because I don't know exactly how I'm going to use this. So now we're going to go ahead and attach this top piece to the um, to this in this journaling spot piece so it's been a while since I created one it does go all the way to the top so we're going to glue this on to the top of this I'm trying to keep this as even as possible um, it is a little bit tricky but I think that we can do it and it looks like we've got, I'm going to turn this over so that I know where my glue needs to go and just make a quick little mark. Just make a mark there and a mark there. And that's where our glue is going to go. So we're just going to use um, our glitter glue. Get a bit of glue here. Down here. Down here. So, and you do want to make sure that you put this, this one's pretty obvious, um, but not all of them are, but you want to make sure that you get this, um, this going the right direction. Otherwise it's going to be really silly. So, oh my goodness, I didn't get that in place before it got permanent really quick. And it is a little uneven as you can see, but we do have some wiggle room within the pocket. So I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just going to trim that bit. I got it a little bit crooked. Ink that. So now what we have, oh, and we also need, I always forget this piece and you can see I'm off, really off, but not a big deal. So let me see if I've got just an extra piece I can throw on here. Yeah stick this on here. Let me just pencil mark this rather than measuring. I'll probably do better if I measured, right? Like that and yeah. It's just about the right um, the right 
whipped there. So let me just grab my cutter here. I want to get that nice and straight. For some reason, I always forget that piece. I'm not sure why. Brain fart, I guess. I do like to ink this up because it's harder to ink once it's already attached. There we go. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to attach this to the um, to the back of this. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. And what I really love about this is you could totally just really go to town on these and decorate them up really big and wild, or you can keep it really simple. You could, I'm going to play the next time around with doing one that's, um, that, that opens on the side. I just am not sure how that would work, but I'm, I'm got it in my head that I want to try that. So we'll see. <laughs> and then we're just going to, it does have a little bit of text, so I'm going to try to get it try to get it kind of even there and I'm gonna go line it up at the bottom because it's easier to trim the top off than it's gonna be to trim this and obviously if you were being more precise than me we wouldn't have this problem but I don't measure truth be told um, I don't understand all the measurements on a ruler that's the honest truth so um, I really struggle. Oh, that's not going to work because I've got wet glue. So let me see if I can just trim this up by hand here. But again, if you measured, you'd probably be more successful at this. But in my opinion, it doesn't need to be perfect. And I think when we strive for that level of perfection, we take away some of the joy. And don't get me wrong, I'm a perfectionist um, in most everything in my life. But with art, I'm just really practicing not being too concerned about that and just having a fun time and not, not stressing. So now we're going to, the way this works, and it's a little bit tricky. So I found that it helps if I just put this ruler in here. And I don't know if it's just initially while things are still drying or what the deal is. But if I put that in there, I can get this to slide in easier. So... Just slide it in until it meets up like that and then pull your ruler out and you've got your hidden journaling spot and um, you have journaling on the front and on the back uh, provided you didn't you didn't have a print on the back but um, you can totally control that and I imagine if you could probably use a thicker um, paper on this piece which would probably help with both this sliding in, but also with the idea of having it come in from the side, which I'm going to try, but we'll have to do that a different day. So I'm just going to pull that up a little bit so it's nice and lined up. Kind of wiggle it a little bit until it's the way you like it. And there we go. So let's go ahead and do just a little bit of um, decorating here. So I've got my little bit similar to what we've already done. I'm not going to change things up too much. I think I am going to use another piece of that lace, though, or that kind of ribbony stuff that we had. If I can find some in here, maybe I used it all in this basket. I don't see any more. We could use a bigger piece of this because we've got a, a larger surface we're working on. I don't want to take away from her too much, so we'll just kind of see how it goes. So let's see. Um, Let's see, what do we want to do? This is actually probably a better piece. I already had this pulled out because I don't want to, again, take away from, from all of this. So we can kind of get this clustered up here down at the bottom. I'm not going to put too much thought into it. Just going to start laying it down. Being okay with whatever happens. Like so, just get that on there. Kind of looks like fishnet, so I like that. And I've um, got some bits of paper here that I want to use. Just tear that down a little bit. It's too big. We are almost done. So three projects in, you know, in a little bit of time. Not too bad. It's pretty rough, but it's okay. Get that on there. And then what else do we have? This piece as well. Let's go ahead and 
and tear that down a little bit as well. These are just things from my my scrap my scrap bin, guys. Nothing nothing spectacular. I don't think I'm going to do much with this. I think I'm just going to do that and then put our word on. Actually, it's really big. Really big. We'll just kind of bring her over here a little bit. I almost think that's too big. Let me find a smaller one. Hang on. Um, those come in a variety of sizes. So let me see if I can find one that I like as much that's smaller. And that one said enjoy. Um, it's just a little bit big, I think, for this space. Well, we've got love. So I won't remember. I didn't do remember yet, did I? I don't want to repeat myself. Oh, I did do remember. Remember always grabs me, though. How about love? Let's do love. <laughs> Just ink that up really quick. Sweet. Okay. Let's go ahead and get these pieces on. I'm going to switch these around in my fabric tack again just because I am gluing on to lace. Like so. I'm going to bring this one down and over a little bit so I can make a little bit of room for I actually think I might want this on here after all. Um, yeah, I do. I like how frayed it is. It's a nice little accent there. And then we're going to put our love on, and I'll show you a close up, and we'll be done. Guys, if you like this video, would you give it a thumbs up? That just helps. Um, the, with the algorithms with YouTube. It helps other people to see what I'm creating. Um, and uh, if you like it, I would really appreciate if you did that. Leave a comment if there's something that you had questions about or um, suggestions on, please feel free to leave me a comment. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would also love it if you did that. I love creating with you and for you. I do this for you guys. I don't do it for me. I don't gain anything from it other than the joy of creating. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.